Hello everyone and a warm welcome to Energy Frontiers. I am Omono Okonkwa. Here are some trending news in Africa's energy industry this week. During his visit to Senegal on May 1st, the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed for countries to ensure a steady flow of energy in the open markets, stating that countries must resist the temptation to hold and instead release strategic stocks of energy. Wintershall Dia has signed a sale and purchase agreement to acquire an 11.25% in the Regen Nord natural gas project in Algeria. Sasso Eco FT, a subsidiary of Sasso, will partner with Germany based energy company Unipa to produce green hydrogen based aviation fuel. Sasso will set up its first green hydrogen plant in the Northern Cape of South Africa. The African Energy Chamber will launch the Hydrogen Summit at the 2022 African Energy Week, taking place in Cape Town, South Africa from October 18th to 21st. The Hydrogen Summit will provide insights into the African continent's hydrogen potential, outlining key projects and opportunities in potential markets. The International Finance Corporation has granted a 38 million US dollars loan to SME financing company business partners for the construction of green buildings in South Africa. Egypt's Petroleum Minister Tarek El Mola has announced various gas projects meant to upgrade the efficiency of the country's national gas grid to sustain domestic demand. The total value of investment cited is placed at over 6 billion Egyptian pounds. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, has said it will contribute for $2.3 million for the Nigeria-Morocco Gas Pipeline Feasibility Study, which will cost $25 billion. A part of the $495 million US dollars fund from the World Bank of Senegal will be used to electrify 700 SMEs, 200 schools, and 600 health centers. It will also fund climate resilient infrastructure projects in the country. Sirius Petroleum and Oil have signed a sale and purchase agreement for stakes in three blocks, offshore and Gola, for 335.5 million US dollars. Italian energy company Eni and the Egyptian Petroleum Ministry will develop a carbon capture and storage project in Egypt's Meliha field. The project will capture and store between 25,000 and 30,000 tons of carbon dioxide annually. A 25 million US dollars investment has been set up for the project. Next on Energy Quick Chat is a special feature on the United Nations Energy Plan of Action that was launched on May 4th to support countries in achieving a just energy transition. This is Energy Frontiers. The United Nations Energy Plan of Action features representation by several countries, especially in the areas of clean cooking and renewable-based mini grids. Please enjoy this footage on the launch featuring Africa statements. As a global community, we are not yet on track to achieve the 2030 Agenda and net zero emissions, and as such, Countries like Nigeria that battle the twin challenges of energy access and impacts of climate change are left most vulnerable. But Nigeria is proud to have demonstrated leadership through its energy compact and the commitment made by our President Buhari to reach net zero emissions by 2060. As highlighted in our energy compact, Nigeria is committed to bringing electrification to 25 million people by 2023 using solar power. Nigeria will support deploying solar home systems and mini grids across our geopolitical zones to support healthcare, education, and ultimately electrify 5 million homes, schools, hospitals, and other public utilities. This process is expected to create 250,000 new jobs along the way. We have a lot of work to do ahead of us, and we could not do this alone. To make this happen, we welcome the collective efforts and offers of support from our global 
and international partners. Now, according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, only 2% of global investments in renewable energy in the last two decades were made in Africa. And even though the continent has vast resources of solar, wind, and other renewable energy sources. In other words, there is an enormous untapped potential for renewable energy production in Africa that can contribute both to closing the energy access gap and to accelerate the energy transition on the continent. Though expanding renewable energy will not only benefit Africa, it will be key to the global efforts to reach net zero targets by 2050. Considering the renewable energy potential of many African countries, it has the potential to emerge as a world supplier of green hydrogen, an essential component of decarbonizing hard to abate sectors. Only eight months have passed since we met at Energy Dell, a milestone event that gave new momentum to universal access to energy and energy transition. The global roadmap for accelerated SDG 7 action delivered by the UN Secretary General as a forward-looking summary of the dialogue charts a clear way forward towards attaining SDG 7 and the net zero emissions. Over 200 energy compacts amounting to 600 billion US dollars have been announced. They represent a true commitment to action by all key stakeholders. Addressing today's energy challenges can and must strengthen more ambitious climate action while advancing the SDGs building better, better from the COVID-19 pandemic and leaving it no one behind. Through implementation of the global roadmap, we, have, we can deliver exactly what is required. We don't have the luxury of time. Arena's latest World Energy Transition Outlook stresses that anything short of radical and immediate action will diminish possibly eliminate the chance of staying on the 1.5 Celsius or even the 2 degrees path. A renewable-based energy transition is the most realistic avenue to achieve greater energy security, national resilience, and a more inclusive, equitable, and climate-proof global economy. Accelerating this transition requires far-sight choices, holistic policy frameworks, wise investment, and most of all, it needs external level of political will and international cooperation. ARENA welcomes the launch of the UN Energy Plan of Action and the Energy Compact Action Network and remains committed to contributing to delivering concrete results for people, planet, and prosperity. The World Bank has consistently recognized the need for strong coordination and more ambition on energy issues. UN Energy provides an important plat platform for interagency collaboration. While we welcome the launch of the UN Energy Plan of Action, it is impossible not to think about the implications of the tragic events of the last few months. Unfortunately, the war in Ukraine is having devastating impacts on people and severe repercussions on energy markets, hitting the poorest the hardest. The current energy crisis could further slow down progress or even set back some countries. In these times of crisis, the World Bank is maintaining its steadfast commitment to the SDG7 objectives. We will continue to help the world's most vulnerable populations while investing in energy alternatives that will a safeguard energy security and protect the world from future energy crisis and the impacts of climate change. Global cooperation on energy is imperative in order to realize not only the commitments laid out in the energy compacts, but also in the urgent implementation of the nationally determined contributions in order to reach that 1.5 target of the Paris Agreement. The current crisis in Europe has been deepening existing vulnerabilities and inequalities and has caused disruption and has been demonstrating how the world's dependence on fossil fuels 
and the interdependence on the transaction of fuels between countries severely affects the global economy, but particularly, as the Secretary General also highlighted in his Global Crisis Response Group report, impacting already vulnerable countries even more. The UN Energy Plan of Action is our collective response to the immense challenge we are facing in achieving SDG 7 before the turn of the decade and delivering on our UN Energy Promise, which we committed to at that high-level dialogue last year. Current events have made it evident that a forward-looking sustainable energy infrastructure based on opportunities and innovations plays a vital role in countries' development policies. Let us be clear, the events of the last few weeks are yet another reminder that our energy matrix, both of tomorrow and for the 21st century, is undergoing deep transformation. We simply must get the energy transition right to succeed in improving quality of life and leaving nobody behind, and indeed to open up new development pathways and opportunities. Nigeria has been uh, uh, the, the North Star or beacon for us in terms of policy and commitment towards helping Minigrid as an intervention to, to electrify uh, Nigeria. I mean, if you look back 10 years ago, uh, you know, countries in Africa did not go through a landline uh, expansion to have telephone access. It was telecom tower that proliferated. I see Nigeria as, again, the North Star or the beacon for other countries who can adopt a similar kind of policy framework so that companies like us, which is private company, can come in and install mini-grids. In India today, we are installing 20 new mini-grids per month. So we can expand very fast if other countries in sub-Saharan Africa also has a very supportive uh, mini-grid policy like Nigeria does have today. These successes have set the stage for the decade of action. And I want to thank each of you for your commitments and partnerships in this process. But as we all know, the success of the energy compacts will be moving from commitments to actions on ground in a lot of these countries. Today's launch is a starting point for us to work together and bring these com compact commitments alive and deliver on our promises for Sustainable Development Goal 7 and also the Paris Agreement. And I urge you to all do this and support the process and support everybody else. Finally, I look forward to the close collaboration and to make sure that we achieve a just and equitable energy transition for all and make sure as we do this, nobody is left behind. Let's track some energy products prices for you in a moment. Welcome back to Energy Frontiers with me, Omolo Okumpo. Early on Friday, the London Brent Group jumped 0.78% to trade at 111.6 USD per barrel. While the US WTI went up 0.71% to trade at 109 USD per barrel. Natural gas slipped 0.71% to trade at 8.72 USD per MMBTV, also in early Friday trade. This week in Antonano Rebo, Madagascar, a gallon of gasoline costs 15,521 Malagasy Ariari. While in Yaoundé, Cameroonian capital, a gallon of gasoline costs 2,461 CFA francs. And that is the package for this edition of Your Energy Frontiers. And we thank you for watching. You can follow the show on Frontier Africa Reports, websites, and all our social media accounts as shown on the screen. I am Omano Okonko. And I will see you next time.